This is your last chance. After this, there is no turning back. You take the blue pill. The story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill. You stay in Wonderland. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Greetings, citizens. Red pill much? Thank you. Do you have any people paid by the CIA who are working for television networks. This, I think, gets into the kind of uh, getting into the details, Mr. Chairman, that I'd like to get into in an executive session. Now we're some health news. You know the old expression, don't worry, be happy. 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 From a parking lot in Phoenix, Whether reporting via satellite with Nancy Grace, who seemed to be in the same parking lot <laughs> in Phoenix. I'm basing that, of course, on the fact that the cars that are passing by Ashley Banfield's location box also appear to be passing directly into Nancy Grace's box. After faking a news conference, instead of facing the usual grilling from journalists, the emergency management agency had its own employees, you see them sitting down right there, pretend to be reporters and ask the questions. Could this be the end of email overload? Could this be the end of email overload? Could this be the end of email overload? Could this be the end of email Going now to Saudi Arabia and Charles Jaco. Charles, are you still hearing me? Charles yes, uh, the air raid the sirens are just now going off here near these U.S. bases in Saudi Arabia. We've sent the entire camera crews inside right now. We're all preparing to put on our gas masks, as we've been told. There are sounds of planes overhead. We don't know whose planes there are, but air raid sirens Region are going off citizens. insistently. There are military convoys Red on both Pilgrim. sides of me. We're being told to get off this platform and... All right, Charles Jaco, that doesn't mean that he is in any imminent danger. Of course, we can't know that. CD, if you need to take cover, I notice uh, that you've got your gas mask in your hands. If you need to put it on, we, we, we please have, do so if you need to take cover. People are looking up in the sky, scanning, sticking out behind it. Now, when you detect this, you can tell it's been launched. Thank you. graffiti on it? Yeah, show me graffiti. Larry King show or bust. Je suis un journaliste américain. Wolf. Wolf. U.S. President George Herbert Walker Bush pushes for a land war against Iraq. But polls show the U.S. public is split 50-50 on that idea. Then comes this eyewitness testimony before a congressional committee from a 15-year-old Kuwaiti girl the claim is she cannot be identified for fear of reprisals. While I was there, I saw the Iraqi soldiers come into the hospital with guns. They took the babies out of the incubators, took the incubators and left the children to die on the cold floor. The U.S. public is outraged. The result? Support for land war zooms. It's a turning point. Desert Storm is launched. 135,000 Iraqis are killed. An estimated 1 million Iraqis, many of them children and old people, then die as a result of 10 years of sanctions. One small problem. There never were any incubator baby deaths. Not one. The Canadian Broadcasting Corporation's investigative flagship program, The Fifth Estate, reveals the girl to be the Kuwaiti ambassador's daughter, given her lines and coached in acting by the giant American PR firm Hill & Knowlton. It's one phase in a $10 million joint U.S.-Kuwaiti campaign of deception. This man is lying. I myself buried 14 newborn babies that had been taken from their incubators. This man is lying. And they had kids in incubators, and they were thrown out of the incubators. ...in a contradiction about weapons of mass destruction. Surely that will be a big story.
How much of an axe do you have to grind with Secretary Rumsfeld? But he wasn't just any heckler. Were you nervous? Tucker, I resent the word heckler. I'd like you to take that back. Okay, I'm not taking it back. Okay. Isn't it enough that he was wrong and had bad judgment? Why does he have to be a liar, too? Well, you know, that's the question you'd have to direct to him. But won't. Right after 9-11, people were asked about Iraq, and only about 16% felt Saddam Hussein had anything to do with it. But with all of this propaganda coming out, Cheney and all those folks, about 28% believed that Iraq had something to do with it. Two years after we invaded Iraq, close to 60%, 56% of Americans believed a delusion. What did Iraq have to do with what? The attack on the World Trade Center. Nothing. There are five giant multinational corporations who control all 14,000, virtually all 14,000 radio stations in America, all 5,000 television stations, 80% of our newspapers, all of our billboards, and most of the large internet content providers. So there are five guys who are deciding what we hear as news and information. Uh, Whitney Houston died in a swimming pool. She had more than twice as much coverage on primetime TV than 250,000 people who died in Haiti. Lance Armstrong was involved in a doping scandal. Oh, my God. F almost three times more attention than we gave to the death of a quarter of a million people in Haiti. So, three years after the Haiti quake, there are 378,000 Haitians who are still living in tents. Our uh, uh, Wolf Blitzer is not covering that story, okay? He's busy trying to entertain us. The Iraq's, Iraq's continued, continued defiance, defiance of the community of, the of nations community presents of a nations challenge nations which must be addressed. Presents a challenge which must be addressed. The member for Grindler? It is inherently, it is inherently dangerous, dangerous to, allow a, country such as to Iraq. allow a country such as Iraq to retain weapons, to retain weapons of, mass of mass destruction, destruction particularly, particularly in the light of its past aggressive behavior. Past aggressive behavior. That's right. If the world if the community, world fails, community to Iraq, fails to disarm Iraq, we fear that other rogue states we will be encouraged to believe that, that they too can have these weapons to the least. The administration continues to make the use of video news releases, which are prepackaged news stories sent to television stations, fully aware that some or many of these stations will air them without any disclaimer that they are produced by the government. Comptroller General of the United States this week said that raises ethical questions. Does it raise ethical questions about the use of government money to produce stories about the government that wind up being aired with no disclosure that they were produced by the government? Uh, there, there is a Justice Department opinion that says these, um, these pieces are within the law so long as they're based upon facts, not advocacy. Jane, what more can you tell us about the Salomon Brothers building and its collapse? Well, only really what you already know. Details are very, very sketchy. As you can see behind me, the uh, Trade Center appears to be still burning. We see these huge clouds of smoke and ash. And we know that behind that, there's an empty piece of what was a very familiar New York skyline. 1,500 people are being treated. The collapse of World Trade Center 7 on 9-11 was a rare event. Our study has identified thermal expansion as a new phenomenon that can cause the collapse of a structure. I scream, you scream, you know the rest. I scream, you scream, you know the rest. I scream, you scream, you know the rest. I worked nights at the time, so I didn't want to be bothered. And then my cell phone rang again. And I'm like, I'm not going to answer it. First saved message. Yeah. Hey, it's Brian. A plane crashed into the church at the top of the drop fly. And I'm in it. And I can't breathe. Tell everyone I love them. I don't get an idea. End of message. Brian left that message. And that must have been the first or second phone call that I received that morning. And I mean, I just didn't realize it. You know, it's, it's really hard to struggle with, you know, what would have happened if I answered the phone? 
we received an order from one of Murdoch's uh, apparatchiks, if you will, that we should cut away from our newscast and start carrying a fawning tribute to Ronald Reagan that was airing at the Republican convention. Uh, we were stunned uh, because up until that point we were allowed to do legitimate news and suddenly we were ordered from the top to carry propaganda. Supposedly a CNN reporter found Osama bin Laden took a television camera crew with him. Uh, he is a major terrorist financier went in to Osama bin Laden's hideout. We are put in a minivan with curtained windows and drive west. As night falls, we move to a four-wheel drive vehicle that makes its way up a rough mountain path past checkpoints manned by heavily armed men. Interviewed him and his top leadership, his top lieutenants and colonels and generals in their hideout. Mr. Bin Laden, you have declared a jihad against the United States. Can you tell us why? The U.S. government has committed acts that are extremely unjust, hideous, and criminal through its support of the Israeli occupation of Palestine. And we believe the U.S. is directly responsible for those killed in Palestine, Lebanon, and Iraq. This is a CNN reporter with a camera crew. And he came out and told everybody, within three weeks, Osama bin Laden is going to attack the United States and Israel. Now, don't you think that's kind of strange, folks? You see, because the largest intelligence apparatus in the world, with the biggest budget in the history of the world, has been looking for Osama bin Laden for years and years and years, and can't find him. Some doofus, jerk-off reporter with a camera crew bosses right into his hideout and interviews him. Now that tells us two things. Either everyone in the intelligence community and all of the intelligence agencies of the United States government are blithering idiots and incompetent fools, including the entire apparatus of the FBI and all of their personnel, or they're lying to us they're not looking for him. All over judicial nominations, which the president will address this morning. Nominees who both sides admit are qualified are being held up because of their possible, not demonstrated, views on one issue, abortion. This should be a trademark issue for FNC today and in the days to come. There was nothing covert about the way uh, the managing editors in New York or Washington operated. They made it perfectly clear what they expected from us. The so-called 9-11 Commission has already been meeting. This is not what did he know and when did he know it stuff. Do not turn this into Watergate. Every morning there was a detailed uh, list of subjects to talk about, not talk about. Kerry's speech on the economy at Georgetown is likely to move on to the topic of Iraq. We should take the beginning of the Kerry speech and see if other news at the time is more compelling. It is not required to take it start to finish. They were just actually issuing edicts to the reporters to control what they could say and how they could say it. Let's refer to the U.S. Marines we see in the foreground as sharpshooters, not snipers, which carries a negative connotation. When headquarters sent a memo every morning and said, we want to touch on the following issues. We want to cover the following stories. We want to do them in this particular way. Our job and our objective then was to execute the plan. The pictures from Abu Ghraib prison are disturbing. Today we have a picture aired on Al Arabiya of an American hostage being held with a scarf over his eyes, clearly against his will. Who's outraged on his behalf? So. Here's just a segment of stuff that will never appear on American television.
So there are a hundred thousand stories like that that simply do not get uh, into our consciousness. And so we remain uh, kind of immune from having to deal with uh, the consequences of our collective behavior. As if a demolition team set off when you see the old demolition to the old buildings. It looks like one of those scenes of an old building being purposely dynamited and blown up. Anybody who's ever watched a building being demolished on purpose knows that if you're going to do this, you have to get at the under infrastructure of a building and bring it down. The way the structure is collapsing, this was the result of something that was planned. It's not accidental that the first tower just happened to collapse and then the second tower just happened to collapse in exactly the same way. How they accomplished this, we don't know. The building collapsed to dust. You don't find a desk. You don't find a chair. You don't find a telephone, a computer. The biggest piece of a telephone I found was half of the keypad and it was about this big. What happened to the concrete? The concrete was pulverized from river to river. There was dust powder, two, three inches thick. The concrete was just uh, pulverized. In addition to those pictures we've all seen too much on television before, when a building was deliberately destroyed by well-placed dynamite to knock it down. If, if, if they had detonated, that yes, if there were plans yeah. to take down our building. Boom, 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 boom. I heard a second explosion. There was a uh, heavy duty explosion. Then there's those secondary explosions and then the subsequent collapses. The explosion blew and it knocked everybody over. To me it sounded like an explosion. It sounded like gunfire. Bang, 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 bang. And then all of a sudden, three big explosions. And we heard a big explosion coming down. And then the entire top of the building just blew up. We saw some kind of explosion. By the force of the explosions. Big explosion. Blew it back into the eighth floor. Then we get to the lobby. This is a big explosion. The lobby took the zoo a bomb. Had exploded there. A huge explosion now raining debris. It's been a huge explosion. Huge explosion that we all heard and felt. We just witnessed some kind of follow up explosion. We heard a very loud blast explosion. Smoking a secondary explosion at uh, Tower 1 camp. That is another bomb going off. He thinks that there were actually devices that were planted in the building. Planted in the building. pancake theory, according to which the fires, while not melting the steel, heated it up sufficiently to cause the floors weakened by the airplane strikes to break loose from the steel columns, and this started a chain reaction. So you would expect then from that theory, which is the official theory, to see a whole stack of floors piled up on top of each other and then a spindle of core columns standing too. The core of each of the twin towers consisted of 47 massive steel columns. If the floors had broken loose from them, these columns would have still been sticking up into the air a thousand feet. The plane did not cut all those core columns. We designed the buildings to take the impact of the Boeing 707 uh, hitting the building at any location. The building probably could sustain multiple impacts of jetliners. That the plane flew straight into the building. Straight through, through him, right. So you're saying that the building was actually designed to cope with a hole like that and right. then still yeah, survive? Yeah, it was, it was. If you had dropped, say, a billiard ball from the top of the World Trade Center, 110 floors up there, it would have taken 8 to 10 seconds to hit the ground, encountering no resistance whatsoever. The Twin Towers came down in nearly free fall speed. 200,000 tons of steel shatters and explodes outwards over 500 feet. This means that floors shattered at an average rate about 10 floors per second. There is no scenario for a pancake effect of buildings falling that allows them to fall at the rate of free fall. Now what can do that? What, what can move mass out of the way? Explosives. Forty-seven huge steel columns going up the core. And they're interconnected. How do you get uh, them to fail simultaneously so the core disappears. It looks like those core columns were cut. The way we do this is by cutting the beam at an angle. Uh, 
I started looking at the molten metal. All three. We are not Jesus, nor do we have Alzheimer's. Expect.